So welcome to Scratch, everybody. I'm going to start out just giving you kind of an introduction to the first four worlds. In each of the worlds, you're going to learn a little bit more about some of the things you can do with Scratch. This is assuming you've already watched the sort of introductory video that gives you the basic layout of, of how Scratch works and all of that. And this is just getting started writing the code. So each of these worlds has some common features. They have a hero that's trying to get to a goal. So in this case, the hero is the clownfish. He has a start point, and then he needs to get to the goal. When he gets there, he'll say he got there and do a little dance. Now, at the beginning, it's sort of easy to do, and then it gets a little bit harder as you go along. So if we go into world two, now we're going to add villains. In villains, you've also still got obstacles in the way, and you've got villains and a goal, and you have to avoid the villains. So now the elephant is the hero, starts at the rock, and he's got to get to that little pond. And he's going to have to do so by avoiding the black squares, but also avoiding the lions, who are the villains. And if he doesn't avoid the lions, then oops, he gets chomped and goes back to the starting. When we move on to world three, we're going to add portals into the mix. Portals are ways to get past... Let me just go here as the code. Ways to get past the obstacle by transporting yourself. So now the hero is the ember and his starting point is the match. And then the goal is to get to those logs and set them on fire. But in order to do that, you have to go through the portal to avoid the black squares that are in the way. So you'll come out of one of these four portals. You don't know which one. That's okay. You write the code to figure that out. That's part of this is writing conditionals. There he goes. That time he came out there and he's made it to his goal. So let's go back now to world one, which is the first level. And this is just basic motion going forward, backward, up and down. And we're going to go inside and look at one direction. And here's our hero in world one, and he just needs to get those three squares to the right to his destination. So we're going to go inside the editor window, and here's where you can see that what we call the stage, where everything is acted out or your code uh, is executed. And here's your programming window where you can use all these different blocks to give your sprites different commands on what you want them to do. But our particular one, first thing we want to do is always look at what the instructions say. If there's some yellow instructions here, there's probably there for a reason to help us out, make sure we don't make any mistakes, we don't lose our work. It's a good habit to get into to start out first thing anytime you load something and remix your project. That means you're saving a copy into your own account so in case you get disconnected or there's a crash or scratch, sometimes has problems, that you won't lose your work. So to remix, you just find this little orange remix button, give it a click, and now it's going to be saved into your account. The next thing the instructions say are click on more blocks. That's right here, more blocks. These are the ones we're going to use for the time being to control our, our hero sprite. Now it says the first, another habit you want to get into is setting up a reset. A reset means if something goes wrong with your code, you just want to like set everything back to the beginning so that you can test it right away. It's a fast way to do that. So we just set it up so that when the space key is pressed, it will reset the code. Then never use the reset under your green flag. The reason for that is later on it's kind of cheating because it will stop other things from happening. You don't want to do that. So just get in the habit of making a reset with your space key. Finally, it says use the more blocks, the right, left, up, or down, to help the clownfish get to his goal. So right now I can see here that I wanted to move one, two, three spaces to the right. So I'm going to drag three right blocks underneath the when the green flag is clicked. And then I click on the green flag and voila, one, two, three, there he goes, right to, the, right to his goal. Now what we would like to do is I'm going to reset this now. I'm going to hit the space key and that sends him back to his, dest to his start point. And what we're also going to do now is always add the win block to the end of the code. 
basically that's just a little test. It'll it'll let you know if you've been successful in your code, even though it might be obvious in this case that you made it to your goal, sometimes maybe not so obvious. By putting win, it will do a little celebratory dance and say something about its success. So in this case, I'm clicking on the green flag again now, and you'll see he says, oh, you did it giving me credit for his actions and he does a little dance okay so you want to get in the habit of always adding win to the end of your code okay now let's look at this we have three rights and a win totally good code there are several other ways you could get your clownfish fish to its destination there are even some hacks you could do please don't do those for now because it won't really help you in learning this process if you're new but there are a couple of non-hacks that make sense. For example, if I don't want to do three writes and a win, I have another option here. I have horizontal blocks. Horizontal, of course, means move left or right. If I want to move to the right, that's in a positive direction. You have to think of a number line where you're moving to the right is always positive. Moving to the left is in a negative direction. So I would want him to move horizontal blocks three. That would be one, two, three to the right. And that after that, I just put the win command after that and run the green flag. And it has the same effect as if I had done one, two, three writes. Okay. Now, if my anemone start button was here to the right, then all I would do is make my horizontal block be negative three. That would mean he would move three to the left and he would still get to his goal. But that's not the case. So now I'm just giving a demonstration. I'm going to put this back where it was. And I'll use my spacebar reset to get him back. Wait, wait a minute. What do I do here? Let's get him back home. And let's just change this back to a three and make sure everything's working. There you go. Nice. All right. I'm going to reset him back to his home base. And there's one other way you might want to do this. Under your menus here, if you look under control, you have the repeat option. So I could take the repeat and say, what is he going to repeat three times? Well, he's going to repeat right three times. So if I go over here, drag right inside the repeat block and change the repeat number to a three and put my win underneath that, it too will be successful in getting him to his goal. So that gives you three different options to a successful goal. You're probably going to want to use this one or these rather than this, because when they start to get much more complicated and you have a lot further to travel, it can get tedious dragging multiple copies of these same things over. Well, good luck then. So what you're going to do is make sure you've saved your work at this point. It should be saved, but just to make sure at the very end, always go up and say save now. It's just a good another good habit to get into and then proceed then back through each of the levels in world one each time it'll get slightly more complicated always remember to remix and try using the different methods of repeat or horizontal or vertical and the best of luck to you